you chose to present yourself in a way that you think I'm going to like. Application renovation season five. Welcome, welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm good, Dr. Gray. How are you? I'm good. Let's talk about your application. First application cycle, yes? Yes, sir. That's right. No interviews. No. What happened, my friend? <laughs> what happened? It's it's not the undergrad that you went to. I see over your shoulder a Florida sign. Um <laughs> So it's it's not the fact that you went to a like a school like Florida State. <laughs> what happened? I, I've I've sort of been thinking about the different factors that may have influenced this, but something that screams to me could have been my performance on the secondaries. My personal statement could have been improved. Maybe my school list could have been picked a little better. And um, I have some experiences that I didn't have before that I have now and, and can write. Okay, like what? Uh, for instance, I. For one of the organizations, I got a leadership position as an assistant director of education, and I've been doing a lot of work with edu with making educational materials, and especially now I work with SAT prep and helping uh, some of our students apply for college. Okay, I feel like in definitely, and I lead a team of three, well, now two people, two people to make these materials and have them distributed. Okay, so leadership specifically, something you think you were missing before. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Well, um, I I don't love the fact that you got zero interviews, but I like it for this specific show because it tells me something. It tells me that nobody liked your application enough for an interview. And why? Let's let's figure out that why. It's very different. Um, I actually like when I, I don't like when students apply to this show and they have like six interviews and no mm -hmm. acceptances. I'm like, it's probably your interviewing skills. Yeah. There there may be something else, but it, it may be your interviewing skills. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into the application and and see where we're at. All right. So the first thing we like to look at is. Where are we with submission date? You submitted super early, so not a problem. Um, demographic information is redacted out. One key thing to look here is that you're a Florida resident, which is great. Um, we have English and another language as well. Not marking yourself as disadvantaged, uh, not calculated, um, or I always forget the word. Um, Determined to be disadvantaged, uh, SES disadvantaged from parent stuff. We have that redacted out, so we can't see that anyway. No red flags. All right, so all of the big stuff out of the way, big question marks out of the way. We go to grades, and we see some A's, some AP credits being moved over, and then lots and lots and lots of A's and a couple B's there. And we see 388 science GPA, 387 overall, 383 all other GPA. GPA, not an issue. Would you agree? Definitely. Yeah. A lot of people would be concerned. These first two years, we, we scrolled by, they were done at community college, right? Were you concerned at all about this quote unquote drop from 4.0 to 374, 384 from community college to four year university? Uh, definitely, but I, I could also attribute it to when I got into uni like university, I started to prioritize my extracurriculars a little more. Okay. When I was in community college, it was just school, school, school. Yeah. Because I wanted to get into UF. Okay. Right? Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. I'm not concerned about it. I just wanted to see if you had any thoughts about it. Uh, MCAT, one and done, 514. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so not an issue with MCAT score and uh, all of your subsection scores. No, no big issues there. Good. No preview score on here. Did you take preview? Uh, none of my schools. Okay. I think one of them required, but I just decided not to do it. Okay. So. It, was, it was Eastern Tennessee. I think. Okay. So uh, no no preview for them. And then what about Casper? I did take Casper for um, FAU. Okay. Miami. What percentile? 75th, I believe. Okay. So 75th, 200? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Activities. You talked earlier about potentially a lack of leadership. 
Leadership's not one that I typically stress. Yeah, there are some schools out there that want to see natural born leaders, so to speak, if that's ever a thing. Um, mm-hmm. The biggest thing that we typically see, lack of clinical, lack of shadowing, or lack of consistency in those things. So we'll we'll take a look at your application and see what we see. Um, so you started Muay Thai. You started pretty late in your journey. <laughs> um, it's at the top for, for people who don't know the way that these are sorted on the application is based on start date of um, the completed date. So you see there, 1-2022 is the latest start date out of all of them, and that's just how it's sorted. So so there's, there's nothing that you did specifically or that anyone else can do specifically to, um, to change that. So Muay Thai, uh, as one enters the Mat Life Training Center, they hear various sounds like beeping fight timers, the muffled yet solid impacts of boxing gloves and shin pads, and occasional single leg takedowns on the padded mat. Muay Thai is a martial art that challenges both the mind and body. I took it up because it offered insight into my body's limits, which I was curious to learn about after weightlifting for so long. Being in Muay Thai increased my sparring skills. Don't know why we need to have increased sparring skills in life, but hey, whatever. And flexibility gave me the honor of meeting and sparring alongside some truly unique people. As we all trained together, we formed close bonds, testing our limits and pushing pushing each other to become better. I read that and I'm very jaded when it comes to reading applications. But when I read that, I go, there's only one reason you told me this is you're comparing Muay Thai to med school and the close fighting and sparring that we're going to have to do in med school and the close bonds that I'm going to form with my classmates. I'm going to show you, Mr. or Mrs. Reader, that uh, that I'm ready to, to fight in med school and ready to form close bonds with my classmates. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's why... I when when I read these again it's it's a very jaded outlook on it but they they're two very distinct things that are happening. Number 1, I get turned off because I've read so many of these. I understand the tactics that students take when writing these descriptions and especially with the AMCAS when you have 700 characters, the most out of any of the applications, you have a lot of words to use or a lot of characters, right? It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot at least compared to TMDSAS. How you choose to present yourself is very telling, potentially. You chose to present yourself in a way that you think I'm going to like. You are trying to show me, hey, look at how much of a teammate I am. Look at how much I am there for other people. Versus... I liked kicking the crap out of people in Muay Thai. It was so fun. It, it let me get my stress out. One is you putting on a face. And the other is you letting me see who you truly are. I want to see who you truly are. I want to understand why you do Muay Thai. What it is that lets you walk into that training center every day you walk into it excited to beat the crap out of people. Not that you think it's gonna prepare you better for medicine and med school. Yeah, and I actually did have a question because I initially wanted to, like truthfully, yeah, it is very stress relieving. I, it is kind of fun to kick people, but I wasn't sure whether that would be negatively received or not. So I kind of just- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if it comes across that you're like this super violent person that's gonna start fight club in med school, then, then yeah. Right. But fr- from a stress relief standpoint, but what I'm basically trying to say is stop writing for the med school, for the reviewer. Stop trying to be who you think they want you to be and just be yourself. What is it, what is it when you leave Muay Thai, when you leave the training center that just lights a fire in you and you can't wait to go back, right? I don't know that feeling because I don't do any... <laughs> martial arts stuff. My wife got super big into to Muay Thai and kickboxing and all that stuff. And it lit yeah. a fire under her butt and she couldn't wait to go back every single day and do do more of it. I don't understand it, but I would love to. <laughs> I would love to see it in your writing to understand it. 
research assistant. Um, so looking at um, the one thing I, I try to take a look at is kind of consistency and what you're doing. So you did uh, a few months here and a few months here. Why were those not more consistent things? It was because at that point I had a, I, I had a job and okay. I was sort of transitioning into working full time. It started in January of 2021. So it was kind of just like a part time thing. Okay. And then it was and plus it was an online lab. So a lot of the stuff we did was just the Zoom meetings and things on our own. I'm I'm looking at the description that you wrote, and the description to me doesn't read research. It reads curriculum design. No, I I you're definitely right. Um it te- like I worked in a lab, so that's kind of why I classify it as research. But do you think I could have put that in like as like teaching and tutoring or what would you recommend? Yeah, I, d- I don't know. Maybe yeah. other, um, you're not really teaching unless you are teaching, but the way that you're writing it looks like you're working more on on building a course for people and not necessarily teaching the course to people, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I'd call it teaching. Um, so yeah, just, just something, I, I read that and I go, mm, that doesn't sound like research. And then that's one little flag that goes up in my in my little spidey sense brain that goes, what else are you potentially um, not categorizing properly or mislabeling or um, being a little hyperbolic in your hours with or something like that? So supplemental instructor biochemistry. Got it. That definitely sounds like teaching tutoring. So it looks like that was a semester that you did that. More teaching tutoring, learning assistance, applied physics too. So you have two basically learning assistant TA basically jobs. Um, You only, I think if I counted correctly, you only had 10 activities on your, uh, on your application. Is that about right? right, Yeah. And then two of them are basically the same one. I'm wondering why. And, And not to say that you have to fill them all out, but usually we see a lot more. One of the, like my, one of the things, one of my meaningful experiences um, I had different roles, but mm-hmm. I really wasn't sure whether I could split it up or not. But e- and okay. even then, that doesn't answer the question. Okay. But I mean, you you mentioned a little bit earlier your your first couple of years you were you were focused mainly on classes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right, and then here we get to your big medical clinical job, and then let me just scroll down. Medical clinical medical clinical. You have that one. And then essay. Um, so when we look at this is basically your big medical clinical, hey, I've gotten uh, experience. You have a lot of hours. You did it consistently. The, the way that the application is set up now, you have completed hours and anticipated hours. This to me is a big red flag that you're basically saying, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. Is this a typo? Should this be 23? It's not. I um, The reason is I wasn't sure how long it would be. So I just, in my head, I thought, oh, I think projecting it out a month would be fine. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I said this um, on the last episode of Application Renovation, which I just recorded um, before you, the, the reviewers don't have the ability to call you up and go, hey, buddy, uh, I just have a question about this. I see you mark this activity out to July 2022. Did you mean 2023? Because I don't see any other activities that you're doing past this date. They don't have context about anything other than what's in the application. And so if you're like, well, I was planning on doing this other thing, but I didn't want to put it in there because of X, Y, or Z you are doing yourself a disservice, an injustice, because you don't give the reviewers full context about your application, about your activities. And so I look at your application, I go, okay, you've been doing it for two and a half years and you're done. You've applied to med school and you're done. That tells me that you don't like doing it, that you don't like being around patients, that you're tired of this world. And yet you're applying to medical school. And it's it's weird because I get a lot of pushback from people who are like, I've done it, I've shown that I like it, why do I have to keep doing it? I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what the answer is. 
Medical school is hard. It's expensive. It's long. Residency is long. It's hard. You don't get paid anything. And the med, med schools need to make sure that you are entering a field that you're ready for, that you you know is is what you want to be doing. And actions are much louder than words. And if your actions say, check, I'm done, that tells not a good story, right? And again, with this being the only big piece of data that schools have to go on in terms of what you're filling your time with, there's a big question mark there. I have one question. Yeah. How far should I project? Start of med school. The, the first answer is you project out the truth, right? Don't project out until August of 2023 in your case. Um, if you literally were only going to do it until July of 2022 because you were going to move out of Gainesville and go somewhere else, right? Don't do that. But but also line up the next thing. What are you planning on doing? And it, and it doesn't have to be solidified. You have a job offer or anything else like that. It can be, hey, I'm planning on moving back home to wherever and I'm going to become an EMT. I'm going to be a scribe. I'm going to do whatever. Give that context to the schools. I think this is one of the huge things that having that anticipated date on AMCAS now allows students to do is give a little bit of that extra context. So you could have one other activity that's completed hours, zero. Anticipated hours, 1,500, whatever for something that maybe you haven't done yet, but you're hoping to do. And I, I don't want students to, to lie and go, oh, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna become an EMT, and they they aren't. Um, but if you don't give that context to the schools in your application, you're going to risk them just assuming that you're not doing anything, and, and they're just gonna pass up your application. Which again, with you having zero interviews, is a potential reason why they they didn't offer you an interview. And then students will go, well, well, Dr. Gray, what about what about being able to send an update letter? Great. There's a lot of hope uh, that you're putting on that process. Number one, that the school actually looks at update letters. And number two, that they actually will take it into account if they even do take it. All right. So uh, looking at this actual example. So clinical research coordinator you're sitting in a room with a chart, uh, Novavax COVID vaccine trial. You have a patient walk in, screening visit, shook my hand, introduced myself, screening protocol, all that fun stuff. Set her chart aside, ask why she was participating in the study. Uh, she chose to join. She wanted to be vaccinated so she can protect her daughter who is currently Im uh, immunocompromised. Um, I do not recommend this style of most meaningful writing where you continue the first the paragraph into the next one, the, the first essay into the, the, the next one. They are two separate essay prompts, right? What is the description? And then why was this most meaningful, the activity itself most meaningful? Okay, do not, again, it's a style thing that, there technically isn't a right or wrong. Um, but for me, these are two distinct essays, 700 and 1325. It is not one big 2025 character essay. So you have um, this thing going on. You mostly write about this in the form of Beth, of this form of the patient, and not really helping the reader understand you, who you are in this situation. It's a very common mistake I think that students make is they they try this storytelling aspect that I write about and talk about, but then the story is so focused on the patient and not at all on who you are in this scenario. So it's just a, a change in perspective, right? If you if you think like a movie director, the movie director's job is to make sure that the camera's pointed at the thing that they want the audience to know about. And your camera's pointed at Beth when it should be pointed at you. Sounds like definite clinical experience. Um, just need to re reframe that a little bit more. Um, more teaching assistant stuff. So basically three activities that are basically the same, being a TA and three different things, yeah? 
So that's where when I asked about you, you have 10, but three of them are basically the same. Are we running into an issue of, of like schools going, hey, what have you been spending your time with? Say that again. I said potentially that, that could be an issue. Yeah. Sure. We have community service, not medical clinical, Gators for refugee medical relief. So you're doing some in-person tutoring restored after one year COVID hiatus. Crate filled with basketballs, footballs, other recreational activities were all set out, eager to be opened uh, for some high-spirited games. The question is, what is this activity? Right, so it's Gators for Refugee Medical Relief, and I, I read this activity about recreational activities. That, that's sort of the thing. With, within this organization, I, I, I've done different things. A majority of our operations is usually education-based. There, we do have a medical component, but I haven't been I haven't been to many of those compared to the other aspects that I have participated in, which is fundraising, uh, the tutoring, and then the within my current position, uh, my current leadership position. Excuse me. So running around, making pass, all that fun stuff, and I'm excited to continue tutoring our students as we transition into our pre-COVID operations as an assistant director of education services. Okay, so potential leadership stuff that you'll have on there, your your next application. Okay, physician shadowing. One month in 2019. What happened there? I think just after. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think after shadowing those two physicians, I just kind of thought. I was good, which again is, is, is the whole check. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. But I also had a question about that too. I know I've seen like some of your episodes, you mentioned that you can split off hours for shadowing. Yeah. I'm, I wasn't sure whether I could or not. And I, I didn't want to you know, play with fire. Yeah, it, like, it depends. And and clinical research coordinator is is one of those that I always talk about being one that you can do that with potentially because mm-hmm. I, I I have a kid who's in clinical trials and we interact with clinical research coordinators a lot and I see their job, right? We we interact with them, they're doing their job and then they sit and hang out and wait for the doctor to be done with whatever they're doing. And I'm like, well, that's shadowing. <laughs> that's what you're doing. Um, and so why not potentially split that out? I'll definitely do that then. Okay. Because I know the it's definitely a red flag that my last shadowing was... Um, yep. 19. I... I have one more question. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, I actually am, I'm currently doing a virtual shadowing program too, just because I I injured my arm and I'm, I'm in the process of getting surgery, so I can't really do much. Okay. But is that still feasible? Or do I, you I would it? I would still put virtual shadowing on the application. I mean, we're still doing e shadowing every week. Um, I, I don't think it should be. For, for students during 2020, 2021, where it was like the only shadowing that students were doing, you should be getting in-person shadowing at this point. And sure, get some virtual shadowing to throw on there. All right, so we keep going here and you have certified nurse assistants. Again, you did this for about a year and a half or so. Uh, a good, nice aviation number 737. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good plane nerd. Um, <laughs> And again, it looks like you did the same thing where you basically treated this as one giant 2000 character essay. So again, I would just um, refocus that next time. So looking at this, you, again, from a storytelling aspect, you're uh, arriving at rounds, you grabbed your charts, embarked on rounds, you introduced yourself to to David, this patient, admitted to the floor for spinal fusion, was re- uh, in recovery. And then you are, again, mostly focused on David, right? David, 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 David. Um, and then I excused myself to prepare for initial vi- uh, vital collection. I couldn't help but wonder what I could do to help him feel better. Okay. So that's the only part of you here other than you're grabbing some charts, right? Mm-hmm. So we keep going. Um, you later returned, asked David how he's feeling. His first response was unclear. Again, David, 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 David. Um, there again is nothing about you here to help me understand who you are. Okay. So again, just that refocus there. 
And then academic senator, extracurricular activities from your time at Santa Fe. So it's interesting. Why not label that leadership? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I well, I think it's just because I, I really wasn't directly in charge of of a group or of people, probably. Okay. Would it be okay if I put it as leadership then? I don't know. You tell me. Do you think it's leadership? Well, I did. I mean, I, I yeah, I listened to some of the constituents that I served, brought up their issues to the council to the uh, student government. So I would. Yeah, I would think that'd be okay. Yeah, yeah, sounds like leadership. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I get through your activities and style. Style wise, the writing doesn't let me understand who you are. Looking at your your shadowing, right? Checking that box. Your clinical experience. Checking that box. Looking at from the time you submit your application from June to when you. Theoretically, you're going to start med school in July or August of 2023. What are you doing? Well, here you're doing some Gators for Refugee Medical Relief. You are you are um, here for a month doing clinical research, and you're going to get a little bit more research here and. A couple months apparently it's not that big of a hobby because you're going to stop doing it <laughs> in august of 2022 so <laughs> it, it looks like you have a huge gap in what you're doing other than this gators for medical relief re refugee medical relief sure. so big question mark on your your plans when schools asked uh assuming you're out of school on secondaries what are, what are your plans what did you write about um, I wrote about, again, working with the uh, Gators for Refugee Medical Relief. I wrote about the clinical research coordinator job. And I actually, um, I didn't put this on my primary because it happened in August, but I actually got a job at the University of Florida as a clinical research coordinator. And I worked there until uh, December when I quit. And then I'm still volunteering like right now. All right. Let's take a look at your personal statement. Uh, as I walked into the hospital on a warm night in 2012, I imagined my mom's face as I surprised her with the sweets I had brought her. All right, so hectic hospital unit. You're, you're painting this picture. Um, 2012, doing some math. You're 10 years younger. You're about 12, 13 years old. Just about, yeah. Okay. Uh, hectic hospital. Your mom appeared avidly comforting her patients during their dire time of needs. All right, so mom is some healthcare provider. She never grew tired as she treated them with a smile on her face while I've seen her compassion directly at home. My mom successfully integrated her compassion as a nurse through her interactions with her patients. Why are we focused on her compassion? Because it's something that kind of struck, like it kind of stuck out to me and it's something that I, I, I wanted to, I found myself wanting to do as well. Or I, I, I should say it's a quality about my mom that I really appreciate and I've come to love. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that. Okay. What, what jobs can people do if they are compassionate? Pretty much most medical jobs, even most jobs in general. I'd like to yeah. Say. Most jobs <laughs> in general. So this is another one of those things where I'll, I'll use that analogy of being the director Pointing a camera, you're focused on your mom's compassion for one reason or another. Instead of focusing on the impact that she's having on patients going, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Because there's only a handful of jobs in this world, healthcare related jobs, where you can have an impact on patients. Compassion is just a good human trait. So just focusing on the wrong thing, I think. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, in my like my redraft, my personal statement, I do focus a little less on the compassion aspect, and I do try to focus on the impact because that is something. It's a feedback. It's feedback I got about a month ago, and so I I'm glad that you're saying it too because I it's good to have that connection. Okay. Yeah. So I found myself wanting to emulate her qualities. Right again, you you're focused on the quality versus the impact. Right, so I want to emulate her qualities 
And then this is the, the issue with focusing on only the compassion is in the medical field is just kind of thrown in. Like, I want to be compassionate in the medical field <laughs> versus <laughs> I want to be a compassionate human being. Great. Go live your life. Go do your whatever you want to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So allured is a very dangerous word. It's kind of putting medicine up on a pedestal, kind of, ooh, this magical thing. Uh, so, so be careful with that word. With how clinical professionals like my mom affected the lives of their patients through bedside interactions, you became inspired to become a physician as a senior in high school when your grandpa had a stroke. Okay, so this is kind of like uh, in, in our language, this is seed 1.0 and this is 2.0, it looks like. Um, which I typically don't recommend is another seed because you really only have one. Um, and so let's look through here. Usually strong-willed, your grandpa's afraid, didn't speak English, uh, doesn't help. His neurologist comes in calmly. Uh, your grandfather obviously was re relieved by that. Um, seeing hope in his eyes. And so you you take that and go, I want to be a physician so that I may reassure and empower my patients while dismantling barriers to quality care through patient education. Okay. I can see that. The, the journey that you have laid out right now so far is compassion from my mom and then physician because of my grandfather's neurologist. Right? Okay. Let, let's keep going. Want to work with patients after high school? Now we're now we're to the real beginning. I, I obtained my CNA license, eventually working at HCA North Florida. So some of this stuff, like this is this is going to be in your activity list. So this is just wasted characters for your personal statement. As part of a uh, care team, strive to promote and empower my patients whenever the opportunity arose. So again, uh, very much showing this, I don't know, sales pitchy kind of thing of like, ooh, look at what I'm able to do versus just showing me that interaction. Uh, newly admitted patient Jan, good short name there, a pseudonym for someone. Upon introducing myself, Jan acknowledged she felt anxious about being in the hospital. You listened, you performed care activities, upheld transparency by explaining what I was doing. Why, why throw this word in there? I guess to me, like, especially with patient education and outreach, I feel transparency is something that allows for patients to be more reassured and helps them along with their hospitalization. I can see that may be a bit misplaced. Yeah, it's it's a little salesy, a little telling. Um, yeah. Okay. And then we get to the end for reflection wise, impacting Jen's mood and communication with her care team through our interactions felt terrific as I got to see the same change in my own grandpa when his neurologist reassured and empowered him. You don't let the reader understand how this strengthened your desire to be a physician, how this is motivating you to continue on this journey. It's just, hey, I did this thing and it reminded me of my grandpa. All right, and then we get here. Um, you wanted to serve the community through health outreach and education volunteer with Gators for Refugee Medical Relief, which we already read the activity, which you're playing basketball and games. Uh, and so that's the context that I have right now. F uh, refugee communities in North Florida work with marginalized community members tutoring K through 12 students. Why are we focused on non-clinical things for your personal statement? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> that's, and again, that's a good... Not, not to say that it's wrong, but I don't recommend it. Right. Your personal statement is, why do you want to be a doctor? Not show me that you're a good p person by working with refugees out in the community. You already showed me this. It's in your activity list. And so one of the potential reasons why you wrote this is because you're focusing on tutoring and teaching. And Daniel became more outgoing and is now always eager to learn something new about the world around him. And you got to see him grow and develop his curiosity in the sciences. And ooh, that's kind of like being a doctor because I have to, I have to communicate science to my patients. Do you think maybe there's some potential of that reasoning for for you? Me like a book. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, I just, it, it to, to me, just doesn't help me understand why medicine, which again, my point of view is that is the one goal of the personal statement. Not that you like teaching people science, not that you have great communication skills, not that you love working with the community. Why do you want to be a physician? Why do you like taking care of patients? Um, so now you're a clinical research coordinator. Uh, you helped run Novavax COVID vaccine trial. Um, again, you, you talked about the, one of the patients earlier on as well in your most meaningful. And now we have Tom here. You reviewed informed consent with him, his face filled with curiosity, described the protocol. Uh, if he wanted to participate, he accepted, still active in the trial. Uh, again, mostly focused on Tom, right? So again, just that lens shift. And then um, what is the goal here from, from a reflection standpoint? Why was this important for your decision to be a physician? How is this it reinforcing your motivations to become a physician. So you just say it was rewarding. Yeah. Okay, keep doing it. It's rewarding, keep doing it. Yeah. You don't need to be a doctor. Um, yeah. All right, I strive to become a physician that dignifies my patients in their health through compassion and advocacy. Where did this word come from? I don't see advocacy anywhere in your application. It's sort of, in my eyes, it sort of played hand in hand with with patient education, but I think that may have came off as something completely different. For sure. Yeah, yeah. A advocacy to me is is fighting this the status quo and trying to change laws and policies and fighting for those who are disenfranchised. I don't see any of that in your activities. All right. So it's a buzzword that students like to throw around, and then I go, "Okay, you say you want to do advocacy. Let me go look at your activity list if I haven't seen it yet." Oh, I don't see anything. Hmm. I've seen firsthand the power of patient education, improving health outcomes and patient autonomy. Okay. As a physician, I tend to dedicate my life to empowering my patients and their medical autonomy by giving them the tools to live healthy and fulfilling lives after their hospital stay. Okay. It's a very narrow focus, hospital stay, right? A lot of medicine is out of the hospital. So just maybe a change of words there, change of focus. Uh, 21 schools you apply to. How many secondaries were you able to turn in? I want to say 18. Okay, so you did pretty good. And then you got pre-interview, pre-secondary rejections from Kentucky and East Tennessee, correct? That's right. Okay, so they screened for one reason or another. Um, some schools pre-screen, some schools don't. And they said, no, thank you. And we looked at their, their rates in MSAR. They are both public out-of-state schools, and they have really low acceptance rates, 16 17% out-of-state. Uh, I think East Tennessee was like 3.5% interview rate for out-of-state um, applicants. And we had talked a little bit already about your school list is very much built off of stats and uh, not really taking a look at the fact that... Um, both Phoenix and Tucson are very in-state heavy with one being more than another. I think I think Phoenix is like 25% out of state. Tucson is 10% out of state. Don't quote me on those. Um, obviously, all the Florida schools you're safe at uh, because you're a Florida resident. You have Alabama on here, which is public out of state. I don't know what their acceptance rate is. Uh, Louisville, public out of state. I think they're public. Uh, Miami's private. And then public North Carolina. So lots of public out-of-state schools where you probably had less of a fighting chance. Questions <laughs> after looking at all that? I guess my biggest question, and I can see something that I struggled with and I didn't even realize, um, how can I, what do you recommend uh, in terms of shifting focus from the person to me instead? Yeah, it, it's just literally a, a, a simple shift in perspective with your writing. Instead of that person, that person, that person, it's here who I am in this interaction with that person. Mm -hmm. So just, it shows, it shows who you are through your writing. And it's, it's hard to explain. You kind of have to see it to go, oh yeah, there, that's it. Um, but, but that's really the, the big part of it is, is just changing that perspective just a little bit. Um, obviously you have to write about that person, 
to be able right. to write about yourself in that interaction with that person, but there has to be m you in there as well. And obviously don't um, continue, like don't treat the meaningful as one giant uh, essay. One I, giant I didn't, essay. yeah. Yeah. All that. I'm glad I know it now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I just wrote a few things to make sure it makes good. And then for date and uh, for date projection, you recommend the next to the next um, towards the matriculation date. Yeah, the the general rule of thumb is you go to projected start of medical school. Ass again, assuming you are going to do that thing through the application cycle. And and also, I should one question. Um, I, you also mentioned that um, by like including the non medical portion of my personal statement. Uh, so this is something you don't recommend. Yep. And but like, and it, it, I thought it kind of played into the. Well, again, you kind of you kind of said like I thought it would like talk about teaching people, and so you just wouldn't recommend it. Like yeah, dude. again, it's it's a style thing. My general recommendation is the personal statement is why do you want to be a doctor, not right. why do you think you have the skills necessary to be one, or why do you think you are going to be a good one. And then I have no other questions then. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck. Moving Thank forward, you. hopefully this helps. I appreciate it.